Well, now here today I got this big three-phase 460 volt blower motor for this rooftop unit that I got to replace. Well, this is it right here. Big ass motor. It's heavy too. You might not think it was heavy. And I didn't really think uh, I wasn't very smart because I got to haul it all the way to that roof hatch. But before I do that, I got to haul the other one up that roof hatch, up that ladder over here by myself. But what I wanted to show you, so the wiring here is very specific. You've got 12 wires in here that are labeled. Like this one's labeled number one. And you see line right there is coming into number one by itself. So that's correct. Then we got number two and we've got another line coming into number two by itself that's correct and then well we're gonna have number three over here uh, it's gonna be the other one this yeah right uh, that orange one right there yeah number three that's where power goes in then we got to put four and seven together in a wire nut five and eight together in a wire nut six and nine together in a wire nut and then ten by itself eleven by itself twelve by itself in wire nuts and now this is the tiniest set screw I think I've ever seen on a motor. Well, I got the old one moved downstairs in the basket already. That's how far I made it before I had to stop. I think we've all seen these. These are these uh, flange type of, uh, of pulleys. I don't know exactly what they're called. Somebody pointed it out to me about a year ago on a video. But they're pretty cool. I like them. I think I like them better than the, the twisty ones, you know, the ones that you twist on and twist off. I like this. I like them better. I put this on first, then I put my key in first before I start popping that in there. And uh, and it's going to go together nice and tight. Right about something like there is where my old one was. So I'll put it on here and squeeze it together. So this thing come from the factory, wired up for low volts, you see? We've got three sets here that are already stuck together. T7, T6, and T1. So we've got to change that to the high volt configuration. So then here I've got, you know, the wires all split up by themselves. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put number four and number seven together. I'm going to put number five and number eight together. Number nine and number six together and then one, two, and three each to one of these lines right here. To get my, my conductors, you know, kind of like that, twist them up slowly a little bit, and then I let the wire nut threads actually pull them tighter to each other. That's one, there's number two. There's number three. So we've got number four. Let's see, this is nine right here. Nine and six. Nine and six together. They are partners. They are married. They are whatever. They are one with the other. Mm -hmm. Then number five. And number eight. Five and eight. Five and eight. Make sure that you don't have any little bare strands sticking out outside of the of the wire nut, exposed to everything else because be a problem. Last two. Number four and number seven. If you tighten too much, it'll it'll get easier. So like you're tightening it right and it's kind of tight. It's got some tension on it. And then if you're doing that and it just mm, starts going, that means that you've broken your connection that you've just made and you need to take it apart probably restrip it redo it with a new wire nut because the wire nut's going to have that broken piece stuck inside of it that you won't be able to get out so now i am all hooked up electrically we're all good there 
I want to make sure that my rotation is correct even before I put it in there. I want to just do it and get it over with. So with three phase, as you should know, you have one rotation with the three that are connected a certain way. You just forget about these other ones. So don't, don't pay no attention to those. You've got the three lines, one, two, three. If you turn it on and it's going the wrong way, you just reverse two of them, any two of them. You reverse them and that's gonna switch the rotation and that's all you gotta do. So here's my big power switch. It's tripped. I wonder why it's tripped. I turned it off when I was here. Eesh. Okay, it's turning. Seems like it's turning the right way. Let's see. Wait for it to slow down here. Yeah, it's turning the right way. I don't know if the camera picks it up properly, but we're good. So 50% of the time, when you wire up a three-phase motor like this, you're gonna be good. It's gonna go the right direction at the very beginning. Kind of looks on camera like it's going the other way, but it's not. It's actually going counterclockwise here. There we go, now the camera sees it properly. It's because of frame rate. Oh shit, you know what I did? Guess what I did? I forgot to run my leads through the hole. Gotta change that. So if I don't wanna... Okay, I shut it off, right? Let me see. Yes, I did. Okay. Just making sure, you can never be too careful. So, if I wanna keep my polarity proper, I'll just do them one at a time. So, run my red through there. Connect it to the one that it's supposed to connect to. One wire at a time. You can never go wrong doing things one wire at a time. It's a foolproof, well, mostly foolproof at least, it should be, way of getting it right the way it's supposed to be and not screwing it up. Mm-hmm. Dang, man, I almost forgot about my set screw. Glad I thought of that. These belts can truly be a pain in the ass to get on, so I like to, to do them kind of like so. Usually I use two hands, but so if you get them like so, okay, you should be able to, to pull it like that. And it'll snap on there. And if it goes like that, then the, the, the tightness is pretty damn close. If it's much harder than that, if you can't, you know, pull it and it pop on there like I just showed you very easily, it's probably too tight. If you don't even have to really pull it like that and it pops on there, then it's probably too loose. Well, technically, theoretically, I'm done. All I got to do is push it back in there and secure it. I'll probably check an amp reading on it. Maybe. And that's it. Okay. Let's see if this thing starts. Well, it's gonna start, I'm just saying. All right, all right, all right. So that's running nice and smooth.
So our higher voltage is gonna have the smaller amp draw, six and a half. Well, then that wraps it up for this video. Got the motor installed, all done, running good, pulling no more than 6.07 amps, I think it was, rated for 6.5. We're all set. Thanks for watching. See y'all later.